It's really incredible. I, I just got off work and um, I got dressed for the gym at work. I'm, I usually work out in the mornings before work, but today I started work really early. So I'm going after work and then tomorrow I'll take the day off from work. Tomorrow's Sunday. So I'll meet up with my church group and then I've got plans um, after church to meet up at, at uh, one of the guys that goes there. He's having a get together for the men at his house so we'll have a big men's group there and that should be pretty fun eat some food together and stuff um but anyway so i called my friend mike uh on the phone and he he, he right when i got in my car just something was on my heart to call him you know he's he's somebody that always checks up on me always offers prayer for me lets me know he and his wife are praying for me and i really appreciate it and they they they, they take such good care of me too every month i Every month I get a letter from him in the mail and he sends me financial blessings. And today is incredible. I just called him and on my way from work to go to the gym, I stopped at the post office, right? Because I have a P.O. box. That's what I use for my mail. And not only did he send me a letter with a financial gift in it, but he sent me this card. It says, be intentional, encouraging, edifying sorry I'm trying to read this backward on here it's backward when I put it up on there when I see it edifying and discipling others every day or disciplining disciplining is discipling it's it, in Greek it means training a disciple is a trained one so to disciple somebody means to train I'm going to go disciple my body right now at the gym I'm going to tr go training you understand that but do you see the first words here be intentional. Be intentional. And that's amazing that he sent this card. No coincidences, because guess what my next YouTube video was going to be? The title was going to be Be Intentional. Be Intentional. Now, the reason I wanted to share this with you, well, I'll tell you in a moment, and I want to make this a short video. <laughs> like I always say, I'm going to make short videos and they drag on forever. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. It's like perfect timing. Thank you, Mike, for sending that card because I'm like, okay, I'll make the video today. I'll make it now. Ephesians 5, starting in verse 15, this is what Paul says. He says, look carefully then how you walk not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Do you hear me, you guys? Do you hear him? These are evil days. Listen to verse 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will or the desire of the Lord is. His will is his desire. And do not comes from the Greek word. The root, the root word of will in Greek is thalo. Thalo means desire or want, right? So it's what God desires for you. That's what his will is. Don't be foolish. Understand what he desires for you because he loves you, you guys. Verse 18, do not get drunk with wine. Do you know this isn't spiritually speaking? This is actually literally don't get drunk. It's a Greek word, methusko, which means to be drunk or intoxicated. He says, don't be drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. Debauchery is asotia, A-S-O-T-I-A. It comes from the Greek word sozo, which is, what do you know? Do you know what sozo is? Sozo? Without, it means without sozo, without save. Sozo is to save, right? That's where we get salvation from, sozo. So it's without saving, without salvation. It doesn't mean you're not saved. If It doesn't mean you're not saved if you drink and get drunk with wine, but he says it's asotia, A-S-O-T-I-A. It means without sozo, hmm. He says, but be filled. So what should we be filled with if he doesn't want us drunk on booze? Be filled with the Spirit. Okay, so let's just, 
forget about being drunk and all that stuff. You know, that's that's something that people get really offended if you start talking about alcohol and all that with them. But um, but that's what Scripture says. God doesn't want you being drunk. Just think about it. If you're if you're spending your time getting drunk, and um, and listen, I've spent plenty of time being drunk, so I don't want to be a hypocrite. But if you're spending your time being drunk. Imagine this, you're at home because you're think you're trying to wash your sorrows away or you say that drinking helps you sleep or it helps you to cope with what's going on nowadays. Imagine that somebody needs your help and you're drunk. You can't get in your car and drive to them. You can't do nothing. You got to rely on somebody else to go help them because you're drunk. A neighbor comes knocks on your door. A car just broke down. Can you please can you can you take me here or take me I I really need help. And what do you? Uh you're drunk. You can't because you're drunk. You understand? That's why God wants us to be sober minded, you guys. Sober minded. And when you look up the Greek word for sober, it means not drunk. <laughs> so don't be drunk. But anyway, that's not what I was talking about. Listen, go back to verse 15 of Ephesians 5. It says, look carefully than how you walk, not as unwise, but what, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. So do you get it? Make the best use of your time. Why? These days are evil. They were evil back then. What do you think they are today? You guys, they are more evil than I've, uh, they're just terrible, more evil than I've ever experienced in my life and perhaps your life as well. When he says, look carefully, this, this word, for look carefully in Greek is blepo, B-L-E-P-O. It means to be observant, to discover by use. Ah, this is training. Do you understand? By use, to discover by use. This is why he says disciplining others every day. Disciplining means discipling. It doesn't mean beating up. It doesn't mean cussing at them. It doesn't mean calling name. It doesn't mean telling them what a loser and how worthless they are and all this stuff. And it doesn't mean beating yourself up as well. It means to train yourself. Training because of love. You wouldn't train yourself if you didn't love yourself. And God wouldn't want you trained unless he didn't love you. So he's saying be observant or to discover by use. That's what blepo means, to look carefully. But in other words, in other words, be intentional. Be intentional. Now, I'm going to make this quick and I'm going to use the gym as an example. I'm going to use physical training as an example and I want you to I want you to think of it in a spiritual way, okay? I want you to use this spiritually because there's many things I discover when I go train at the gym. I, I go to the gym unless they don't let me go to the gym anymore, which is possible that's going to happen pretty soon. Unless I get the, you know what, I might not be able to go to the gym. Unless I get the, you know what, I might not be able to go to work anymore. Right? Am I afraid to get the, you know what? Actually, uh, it's, it's not because it can hurt me or I'm afraid to. I'm afraid. I mean, look at scripture says you could drink any deadly poison and it will not harm you when you're a believer. I'm not, he doesn't say encourage you go drink deadly poison and check it out. There's plenty of people that, that handle poisonous snakes. Cause look at the Bible says that you can handle a poisonous serpent and it won't hurt you. Paul didn't intentionally stick his hand in wood to grab a snake and get bit by it. But when he was making a wood fire, Right? They're making a fire and a viper comes out of there because of the heat and it bites him. And everybody on this island was waiting for Paul to swell up and drop dead. But he didn't. But he didn't intentionally put his hand in there to get bit by a snake. Right? So there is a difference with intentional. You know, I don't want to put this stuff in me. But they're trying to force everybody here. And I don't even want to get in on it, you guys. It's just, it's not just in California, it's going everywhere. Even if you live in a place in the United States that's free, it's going everywhere. And if you think it's the mark of the beast, well, guess what? All of Israel, they're dibbed. They're forcing it on all of them. And I mean, it's just everywhere. It's just everywhere. But like I said, I think it's a prelude of what's to come. It's a forerunner of what's to come. It's a warm up. It's getting people prepped. It's getting people prepped. 
so that you will submit and do whatever they say and put into yourself whatever they say out of fear. Fear makes people do anything. Threats make people do anything. We'll starve you to death. That's what they do in a lot of places. They starve people to death so that they would do unimaginable things to survive. It's crazy. We're living in some cuckoo times, you guys. It's cuckoo. That's why I know it might be easier to cope if you, you think so anyway in your mind, in your emotion realm because you're living carnally thinking to be boozed up every day, you know, let's get, let's, let's drink, let's do some drugs, let's do this stuff that just puts us in a happy, happy place. Sober mindedness, you guys. Anyway, I want to use an example of going to the gym now because we're in some dark, dark, evil times. And um, there's some people that don't see it that way because they believe in a false peace and security, which they will declare. Peace and security at last. We got it our way. All of those other guys, that we, the, the bad guys are gone. Maybe they'll declare that when you and I are heart pot out of here. Snatched away. You understand that? Snatched away. To meet the Lord in the air, in the clouds. Mm. With the others that have already died in Christ physically, they will receive a new body, just like you and I are gonna transform. We'll receive a new body. We'll be immortal. We'll put on immortality. And we're waiting for that glorious time. All these people are being forced to take this stuff, you guys. Young people, older people, people are willing to take it too. They got elderly people at home or there's elderly people in the hospital that are believers. So please try not to judge them. You know, I know people that are just like terrified. They can't lose everything. You know, if you think, well, it's the mark of the beast. I don't believe it is. It just doesn't match up. But like I said, I think they're warming everybody up. It's a forerunner. Listen, there's all kinds of stuff they have. They watch us through our phones. They watch you through your smart TV. They got social security cards on everybody. You're, an identi you're identified. I mean, it's almost like everything. It seems like the mark of the beast if you think about it. But I don't believe it's it. I think we're just getting warmed up. But it's coming. Anyway, when I go to the gym, now there's something that has recently changed in my life. Maybe in the last couple months. Um... I've got my eating diet really in tuned right now. I don't drink any alcohol at all. I don't crave it. I don't want it. If you drink it, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Paul says a little wine's good for your stomach, Timothy. Jesus turns water into wine, but he's not encouraging to use alcohol to fight depression or to cope with your life. Jesus used it as a celebration at a wedding festival, right? Paul said use it as a medicinal thing. But some people, they overdo it. I'm not here to condemn. I pray for you. I pray for you because addiction is a nasty thing. And I've been addicted to plenty of things, including alcohol, you guys. I know what a great battle it is. I've had very embarrassing things and terrible things that I just can't stand that happened while drinking to intoxication. Let me tell you, if the Lord didn't take away my shame, I would have shame stuck to me for the rest of my life because of the things that I've done while drinking alcohol. Terrible, terrible things when intoxicated. So it does change the person. Why do you think they call it a spirit? Spirits, you go to a store to buy alcohol, a spirits, wine and spirits. Hmm, interesting, right? Even, even Solomon wrote about 
booze. Booze. It's like a snake. It'll bite you. It's a poison. So just be careful. Listen, you got all the power of Christ in you when you're a believer. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Don't rely on your self-will to fight these addictions, especially if alcohol is one. Don't rely on your self-will. Don't rely on your flesh. Put your trust in the Lord. Rely on his spirit and get help. Don't think you're just going to do, well, it's me and the Lord. No, get some help, you guys. You need encouragement. That's why it says don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. It doesn't say go to a church, go to a building, go and do worship and songs and listen to a pastor preach. Gathering yourself together can be around other people that build you up. It's Gathering together is, is for building up, edifying, strengthening one another, encouraging one another, iron sharpening iron. If you go to a church building, great, but don't go there as a routine ritual thing where you just go in and they got, you know, the songs, the music, the guy preaches, get out the door now because we're getting the next people in. If you're even going anywhere anymore. But gathering together, not forsaking the gathering, which is written in Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> it's not about Sunday church. Oh, well, I go Saturday. See, it's all it's Saturday. Okay, no, 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 it's not about that either. I've talked to the Seventh-day Adventists, man. They believe that they're saved because they're going to church on Saturday. <laughs> Legalistic, lost. Sorry if you're a Seventh-day Adventist watching this, but it's just another religion. I hope you get a relationship with Christ, and I hope that you live by the true Spirit of the Lord. It's not about what day you're gathering together, you guys. What it's about is building one another up so you can get help and you can be a help to others, right? At my church, the place that we gather together, he says it's like a hospital. There are so many recovering drug addicts that go to where I go. There are so many ex-prisoners that go where I go. Criminals, people that committed crimes willfully, people that willfully took drugs. There's people that are still on drugs there and they're going to get help. They're going there to get help. Sometimes we get a bunch of homeless people there and they just want some food because this church, you know, we got some food there. We got some coffee and water and stuff like that. And they just, it, maybe you got a toilet and they want to come in there and get cleaned up. You know what? I'm not judging them. Welcome. I pray for those people. I put my hands on them. I hug them. They're there. They're there. So it don't matter. Anyway, I want to go back. I'm making this video way too long, man. I, I really, maybe I should just not upload it, but I want to. Listen, I want to tell you something about being intentional, okay? Maybe maybe the Holy Spirit put me on a rabbit trail for you guys because hopefully it's touching somebody's heart. Because let me tell you, ever since I've been really in tuned with not just my diet, and diet is, I'm not on a diet, it's just my eating and it's also what I am drinking. And I am not touching alcohol at all. And my carbohydrate intake is very, very, very low. But at every meal that I eat, I am partaking of communion. I went to the store and bought some, uh, I went to the section in, in the aisle that says kosher, kosher food, kosher items. And they got, They've got unleavened bread for Passover that they sell there. So I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I'll get bread, a cracker, it don't matter. But I'm like, that's cool. I'm going to keep this in my locker at work. So I got some unleavened bread I keep in my locker at work. And then I got some Jewish grape juice. Jewish grape juice that's low in sugar, it says. And I got that for to represent the blood of Jesus. And the bread, of course, is to represent his body. So I eat three solid meals a day. And, it, and in between, I'll have a Greek yogurt called Oikos. It's got 20 grams of protein and it's low in carbs. Low in carbs and fat, Oikos yogurt. Oikos, the word, the Greek word that means house, you know, which is your body, your house. And then also I drink this thing called muscle milk. I drink one of those in between my meals. So 
My first meal is protein pancakes that I created and uh, I use one spoonful of pancake flour and then I use one half cup of liquid eggs and then I put one solid egg in there. I put it in a glass thing and then um, I put one spoon of wild blueberries you know, that are wild, organic. And then I put one spoon of frozen cranberries. So the blueberries I use are frozen and the cranberries are frozen. And then I put one spoon, not a heaping tablespoon, I'm talking about a teaspoon. I put a spoonful of, of dark chocolate chips, unsweetened. And I put those in there and I dump a bunch of cinnamon in there and I blend it with one of those things, Those they have these two stir, stir things in it. <laughs> and I blend it all up, whip it all up, and I make about four little flat pancakes and I use this sugar-free maple syrup that I bought. They come out about like maybe that big and they're flat like a crepe and they are amazing. That's pretty much my only carb I eat. A couple hours later, I'll have my Greek yogurt. And then a couple hours later, I'll have my lunch, which is steak and bone broth beef bone broth and I put I put cayenne pepper or Tabasco sauce either or in there I like both to spice it up and um, then and all this stuff is prepped I, I, it all goes to work with me I try to eat every three hours I'm saying couple but every three hours I try to get something in me three hours later after I eat my lunch is when I drink my muscle milk protein shake. So it goes the protein pancakes, oh, with a protein, one scoop of protein powder. I get this carnivore protein powder off of Amazon. I don't do the lactose stuff. So I use this carnivore stuff and um, it's lactose free and I use one scoop of that and then I eat the protein pancakes. And then I eat the Greek yogurt three hours later. And then I eat the steak and the bone broth um, three hours later. And then I eat, um, the, I drink the muscle milk three hours later. And then my final meal is chicken. And sometimes I'll dice a little bit of a tomato in into the chicken. And I put seasonings in the chicken and stuff. I cut the chicken up and all that. And that's what I do. And if I crave something to drink with my dinner, I get squirt zero. Squirt zero. That's what I do. And I put it in a, gla a glass full of ice and I it's great so that's how i do it everything about my eating is intentional everything i'm doing is intentional when i go in the gym i make every single repetition i do is intentional you guys i i it's something that has happened to me probably in this past year where i'm really getting my mind into the muscle and somebody says that's called mind-body connection. And I'm like, oh, that's a good way to say it, that mind-body connection, I get it. So when I'm, let's say, let's say I'm working out my, my biceps or something, I am, um, your bicep on your arm is kind of like your hamstring on your legs. So when I'm doing my bicep, I don't ever make any reps sloppy. I don't drop it just to swing it back up again. I am concentrating and intentionally squeezing every muscle and I lift it and I squeeze it and I let it down slowly and I do what's called reverse breathing. Reverse breathing, most people, if they curl up, they blow out and when they let it down, they breathe in. I do opposite, when I curl up, when I let it down, I breathe out and I have a reason for that. They say that um, when you exert yourself the most, that's when you should exhale, breathe out. But did you know the negative rep, not the lifting part, but the lowering part is where you get your most resistance. So that's when I exhale. I exhale when I am lowering the weight. I inhale when I am raising it. Same thing if I'm doing squats. I do squats with uh, kettlebells in my hands. And I, so when I'm going down with it, I'm blowing out. And when I'm pushing up, I'm breathing in. So it makes me concentrate constantly on my breathing. My breathing is very intentional. Every rep I do at the gym is intentional. Now this might help you with your exercise, but I also want you to think of this in a spiritual manner, in your life, in your walk. 
Everything we put in our mouth, make sure it's intentional. Everything that comes out of your mouth, the words, this is what I am trying to practice because I have said so many unintentional things that sound intentional to other people, especially if it hurts them. Some of us give sign language to other people when they cut us off or you don't like the way they're driving around them, you flip them a sign language, right? And then you say, oh my goodness, Lord, I'm so sorry I did that. I'm so sorry I did that. I'm so sorry. I've been there, you guys. But if we were intentional about everything we can be, you know, listen, let's just read these words once more from Paul. No, I don't really need to read them once more, but chapter five, verse 15, he says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. If that's not being intentional, I don't know what it is, you guys. He's saying be intentional. Be intentional. And this is what my friend Mike, I can't believe that Mike just sent me this because I've been wanting to talk about this for a while now, being intentional. And I'm like, ah, I just don't want, I don't want people to think I'm like trying to oh, go to the gym and I'm, I'm like boasting about the gym. I'm not, but I love exercise. I love it. Whether if I'm not allowed to go here anymore, I'm going to do my workouts at home. If I'm not allowed to go to work anymore, hopefully I can do house calls, people's hair. I really don't know what's going to happen, you guys. Is it scary? It's scary to my carnal, man. It's scary to the emotional realm. But I got to rest in Christ, man. I talked about it on a video I made this morning on my way to work. I was talking about Jesus being on the boat with his disciples. Jesus is in the belly of the boat. You got Christ in the belly of you. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. His spirit's inside of there, right? And he's resting in the boat. And the disciples, they're up on top of the boat freaking out because there's a storm and it's, it's blasting the boat to pieces. The wind and the waves. And I said those disciples, they represent your emotion realm, your mind. You're worried. You're scared. That boat might represent your body. Sickness is hitting you. Cancer is hitting you. All these things left and right. You got you tore a, a, a ligament. You tore a tendon. You hurt your rotator cuff. You got, you've got tears inside of your, your, your arms or something. I have plenty of tears all over the place, you guys. I've torn tendons so many times, it's ridiculous. Because I wasn't being intentional. I was being sloppy. You understand that? I got injuries for not being intentional, but being sloppy. That's right. See that all, it all points into be intentional. Now here's what happens. Jesus is intentionally sleeping in the boat and there's a crazy storm and he's teaching his disciples a lesson. Now, who do you think's attacking them with the storm? Who do you think wants Jesus dead and the disciples dead? Who do you think wants to cast fear into them? See, perfect love casts out fear. So if God is love and God is perfect love and he casts love into you, who do you think's trying to cast fear into you? See, his love casts fear out of you, but who's trying to cast fear into you? You know the answer to that, right? It's the enemy, it's the devil. All oppression comes from the devil. Not that he's God and he's all everywhere, everywhere, but demons are devils too. Fallen angels are devils too. They're devils, right? Opposers. They oppose you. So when Jesus is inside the belly of the boat, the stern of the boat, like he is in your spirit, in the belly of you, the very center of you, right? And your emotion realms are freaking out, just like those disciples are freaking out. Maybe your body's suffering and you got injuries and you don't know what's going on. And Jesus, where are you? Jesus, where are you? What are you doing? You're sleeping, right? And sometimes we're like, where are you, Lord? You're sleeping, you're sleeping. Well, your spirit's not asleep, you guys. It's just that we got to tune into that spirit. We got to live from the spirit instead of trying to get there. We got to live from it. Do you understand? Just like you live from your salvation. You're not living to get saved. You're living from salvation. Just like so many people are trying to get righteous because they're religious. I'm trying to get righteous, trying to get righteous. No, you live from a righteous stand. When you live from a righteous stand, you walk in the spirit. You think and do in the spirit. It's all intentional. But you got to know who you are, right? You got to get your minds there. And that's the, that's the thing, laboring to rest. Hebrews 4.11, it's a labor, it's a struggle to enter into his rest. But when you enter into his rest, it's because you're being intentional. Do you understand that? If you're not intentional, you won't enter into his rest. 
not with your mind and definitely not with your body. So make everything of your, everything you do, make it count. Just like when I go to the gym, not one repetition goes to waste. It all counts. I've become intentional and other people are, are noticing it too and asking me what my secret has been, you know? And it's amazing, I'm almost 50 years old and I've never had such low body fat in my entire life. My entire life and it feels really good. I'm, I'm really, I love the discipline of it, you guys. It's discipline, it's training. I'm not beating myself up, I am disciplining myself. I'm training myself and I love it and I don't wanna back off and I don't wanna lose it. And I wanna just keep on going because when you are trusting in the Lord and when you are doing with the Lord, when you are doing what you hear from Him, it is an awesome thing, you guys. It is so awesome. There is just something that comes out of it where you're just like, it doesn't make you feel, you shouldn't feel more righteous because of it. Because you're already the righteousness of God in Christ. So you can't get more righteous than that. But there is a reward behind it, if you know what I'm talking about. When you resist things that your flesh craves, and you resist it and say no, and you make that flesh re submit it's incredible you guys it really really is and the more intentional you allow yourself to be you will experience you will experience these things and it's such a blessing I'm not mr. perfect I don't got it all figured out you guys I'm on this path with you but trust me I am trying and I want to keep on trying and put every effort I can to enter into his rest. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Sorry I made this message so long. I said I was going to be quick. I thought maybe 10 minutes max. And here we are at like, like what is it? I can't see. My eyes are blurry. 30 something minutes. So anyway, God bless you guys. Have a great one. And I will see you in the next video. And Mike, thank you so much for being a blessing to me, my brother.